Well, the temperature has really, really dropped. It's beautiful out here, and uh, I'm still waiting for some parts to come in. Well, they're not really parts. They're things I need to attach the gas line to the fender and stuff like that. They're supposed to be here in the next day or two. And what this will do, give me an opportunity to do something I've been wanting to do for a while. Let's get my, the first television I ever restored with immense help from our, uh, our good buddy, Brendan, my electronics mentor up in the Detroit area. We restored it together, you know, he was the mentor, I was the guy who, you know, screws and nuts and bolts and, and all that sort of thing. But it turned out to where it worked, the, 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 the TV worked. I, I was so happy about that. I got it for 40 bucks uh, from a fella uh, in Little Rock who was cleaning out a house and he found it, he put it on Craigslist, I bought it. And uh, he said he just couldn't bring himself to throw it away. And I'm glad he didn't because I got it. We did an entire series on it. If you're looking for it, just uh, type in 1952 RCA television restoration and uh, you'll see what we did. I think it was 27 videos. It was a great time. I had a wonderful time doing it. Learned a lot. The first TV ever that I restored. Uh, but it did have a slight roll toward the end. Uh, every once in a while, the vertical would roll. We never did come back to fix that. So I figured maybe this is a good time to see if it's still working because it did get caught in the flood and uh, maybe it's a good time if it's still operational we can maybe spend a day or two trying to figure out what's causing that ever you know ever so often roll I don't like that so it's it's something so let's go in and take a look at what I'm talking about well this is it our little RCA remember it it's it got a little uh, a little, a little bit of rust on it here a little bit I'll have to do a little more cleaning, I think, and then put some good wax on it to keep it from going any further or spray it with some clear, but it didn't turn out too bad. There was quite a bit of mud up in this area here, and I've already cleaned it off. I'm going to give it a second cleaning now that I have some room out here where I can swing it around, do what I need to do. Well, the old back looks really good. I can't believe it. I did not expect this. I'll tell you what, I don't even remember this back looking this good when we, when we worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get it off see what it looks like well that's not bad at all check that out it looks pretty darn good it's got some dust I'm gonna go ahead and take the old air compressor here give it a good uh, blowout all right that looks pretty good it wasn't all that much dust in it actually I think what I'm gonna do now is uh, let me see I think I'll just plug it in to see if it's gonna light up first before we hook up anything to it all right, I've got a cheater cord on. Now if I can remember which one of these is the on-off switch. That's it right there. Okay, she lit up. Remember last time we had this roll problem. It just would have kept rolling and rolling. But if I, I have to go back and look at the video, but I think it's because we had a, uh, a DVD player hooked to it instead of a VCR. So maybe that'll make a difference. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Come on, baby, light up. She's not doing anything yet. I remember last time it took a while too. Let's try the brightness. Nothing's happening so far. Well, this is not good. <laughs> let me let it sit here for a while. Well, everything's lit up to include our uh, picture tube. Down in here is good and high voltage. All the other tubes all have filaments anyway. Still stinks like it did before. I remember that smell. <laughs> well, we got sound. Just no raster so far. Well, she just doesn't want to light up. We got, like I said, I got good sound. Boy, if I only had a raster that good. Let's see if I can do something on the back here. Well, I just went ahead and discharged the tube, but I didn't get so much as a spark. So, it could apparently there's no voltage going up in there. I didn't, not even so much as a little tick, nothing at all, dead. So let's take the cover off this high voltage cage. Check out that tube, it may have gotten dirty. There may have been some flood water got up in there, even though I don't see it much around here. There's no telling. All right, let's give this a blowout too. Let's 
I'll probably have to uh, pull each of the tubes, clean the pins, and put them back in. And we'll go ahead and give a good spray out to each of the uh, pin contacts for all three of these, uh, all four of these tubes actually. We're going to clean it up really good and then blow it. When I'm done, I'll just blow it all out with the air and make sure everything's dry and put it all back together. All right, everything's been clean, pins blown out. Let's go ahead and put the cover back on. All I'm trying to do today is get a raster. A raster is, you know, a line, at least a line of light across it that shows that the... Uh, the picture too. I may go ahead and take the take, take this plug off and go ahead and uh, spray it out also. I don't know, you know, some corrosion may have gotten up in there. You never know. All right, that's that. Everything's clean to include the uh, the neck of the tube, the CRT. And uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and turn it back on. If, it, if we still don't get a raster, that means we're probably going to have to pull the entire uh, chassis, tube and all. It's all one piece, I think. I think it's all one piece, maybe not. Can't remember. No, I guess it's not one piece. Just take it all out and uh, the chassis and look underneath it and see what we can find. And then I'll be uh, coordinated, co coordinating, of course, very closely with Brandon, my electronics mentor. He's, he's the TV guy in our family. And we'll get this thing working. So maybe we can avoid it all by getting a raster when I turn it on now. So keep your fingers crossed. All right, she's turned on. Let's see what happens. just let it cook for a while if I see anything I'll come back I'll tell you what uh, let's not give up yet before uh, my electronics mentor Brendan who is like I said is the TV expert in the family before he gets on my case and says hey you know why don't you just check for some high voltage coming out of here and going up to the pitch tube check your high voltage and uh, that, that'll make me feel like I didn't waste all my time teaching you this crap so what we have to do is uh, we have a high voltage probe here now keep in mind there's very high voltage going up to that tube thousands of volts okay thousands that's why they keep this in a cage and that's why remember i told you that electricity is like a caged animal that's why they keep it in a cage now you can take that to the bank and then they keep a cover over it and then they have a you know a rubber thing up there that goes over the thought they're not always on the picture tube but we're going to test to see if there's any voltage getting up to the tube all i'm going to do is i'm going to take this uh, the alligator clip. I'm going to gator wire it. I'm going to just clip it to a ground. Then I'm going to stick this probe in there. I'm going to touch that uh, piece of metal right there that comes out of the side of the pitcher tube. And then I'm going to flip this little switch on. The little switch. It's spring load. It pops back when you release it. And then we're going to find out what the voltage reading is. Now this thing goes up to 42,000 volts. Alright, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and stick the old probe in there. I'm just going ahead and ground it on this cage, one of the screws. Let me make sure the pin's tight on this thing. You don't want them to get loose on you. Alright. Now I'm going to stick it in there and lay it on that metal thing you see up in there. If I can get a little focus here so you see what I'm doing. There we go. Lay it up there. Hit the switch. No voltage reading whatsoever. No volts. You think that could be why the picture tube won't light up? I think so. This is the uh, schematic that Brendan and I years ago restored this TV with. I had it blown up downtown, and I'll tell you what, you can see all the lines. We followed everything out. I, just to get her going, because it was pretty messy, and we got it. You know, not as bad as I've seen some, but we had to do a lot of rebuilding on this baby from top to bottom. Anyway, uh, if I can get this thing, stupid thing to stay open, the tube that we're talking about, that, that we're messing with, that's not got, a, got any voltage out of it, is this one right here, the uh, 1B3GT. It comes off the filament, and uh, I took the tube out of the socket, checked the uh, tube filament between uh, 2 and 7, and uh, it's good. They're good. And so that brings us back to the tube socket itself because we're not getting any voltage off of here. And uh, I decided, well, what the heck, you know, let me poke around here and I'll, I'll even test this resistor. Anyway, I went ahead and checked out. This is uh, your auto transformer right here. And they just take, they just pick off at certain points for certain voltages. The only voltage I can find is uh, 250 volts across this fuse right here. It's supposed to be... 260. Now all that stuff is inside the, the uh, cage 
and I and, and uh, you know the high voltage cage. And I also traced all the wires back to where, as far as I could go, you know, to a pin on the tube. And everything has continuity. Everything's good. I cleaned tube pins as far back as I could, without removing the chassis. Anyway, the bottom line boiled down to uh, Brendan and I agreeing that the whole chassis needed to come out. We need to look up underneath. I've just taken it out, and it'll give me a chance to clean the inside of the uh, the cabinet again. And check this out down here. There's the date this thing was made, March 4th in 52. And this is the inspector, HC. HC! No wonder this stupid thing isn't working. Well, it doesn't look too bad, although the bottom of the power transformer got a little bit rusted. I'll have to sand that down a little bit, a little bit, try to do something about that. I probably, I'm not going to take it out, but I'd like to at least, you know, do what I can to make that better before I put it back in. Right now I'm going to take the old air compressor. I'm going to blow this thing completely out. See if I can't uh, get all the dust out. Not a lot of mud. I'm real happy to see that. Not a whole lot, but there is some mold that formed on the outside of these uh, wires. But I'll have to take out every tube and clean the sockets on every one and then put them back. I spray them out real good and then uh, these uh, these pots up here will have to be they're working okay but they need to be sprayed out and put a little bit of WD-40 in them to kind of oil them and loosen them up a little bit but anything else I see I'll fix that too we worked on this thing for a long time what did I say 27 videos boy that was fun I enjoyed this I really did well let's get some air and Blow it out, start getting rid of this dust and crap. With everything inside looking pretty good, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, take our little spray can and spray some, uh, flu uh, some uh, you know, 2D electronic. Kind of hard to spray it when you're at a horizontal. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and spray that down inside there and work these knobs back and forth. Uh, we're going to do that to all the pots on the front. Every one of them now they're upside down in this particular chassis has the holes accessible. Now we'll give them a blowout too. Here goes. If she blows up, she blows up. Well, at least the light's coming on. Let's see what happens. I'll tell you, this is getting ridiculous. Now the CRT won't light up. Let's try another position. Let's see. Let's try that position, see what happens. Still nothing happening. Oh, God. All right, I went all the way to the left and finally got the CRT to light up. She's beginning to light up down in there. So we'll see what happens now. The problem is we're still not getting any high voltage. We're getting zero high voltage. We can test here now because it comes out of this uh, out, of, out of here. This capacitor runs around to our CRT there, so we don't have to be poking up in there to get it. We can just go right here, and as you can see, we're getting nothing. All right, and we're getting no raster on the TV either. So I guess we'll just have to come back to this at another time, and. Uh, but at least we now know what it's not. <laughs> Until next time, this is John.